This is Brent of the Brookbush Institute, and in this video we're going over manual therapy techniques, specifically instrument-assisted soft tissue mobilization. Now, if you're watching this video, I'm assuming that you are a licensed medical professional with instrument-assisted soft tissue mobilization within your scope of practice. Now, there's some gray area here. Not every state has legislation around these tools. If you're not sure, check. I would hate to see somebody getting in trouble because they watched one of our videos and used it on a patient or client when things did not fall within their scope of practice act. Now, these tools, just like all of our other techniques, fall within a model of practice, and we are very big on assess, address, reassess. So even though these tools are specific to perhaps fascial tissue, we're still going to base their use on reliable assessments, we're gonna use these techniques, and then we're gonna reassess, and if they're not effective, we're not gonna use them again for that particular patient or problem. In this video, we're gonna go over posterior curl fascia and Achilles tendon instrument-assisted soft tissue mobilization using our smart tools. I'm gonna to have my friend Sonia come out. She's gonna help me demonstrate. Now, the first thing odd you might have heard me say in this video is posterior curl fascia and not gastroc and soleus instrument-assisted soft tissue mobilization. And that's because at the Brookbush Institute, the research that we have seen really points to this stuff being superficial fascial structure techniques and not deep muscular techniques. What we're trying to do is perhaps help mobility, right, and address some of the dysfunction of these superficial layers, not try to address, uh, for example, hypertonicity inside of a muscle itself. So with that being said, I'm gonna go after the posterior curl fascia and maybe these superficial connective tissue structures like the Achilles tendon with the idea that I'm gonna address mobility. In this case, you might think mobility would be can we get more dorsiflexion out of Sonia? Or maybe if she wasn't getting full knee extension, could we get a little bit more knee extension out of Sonia? These would be great things for us to test, right? And we could use an objective measure like goniometry to make sure that this technique is actually giving us some sort of measurable result. Now, all instrument-assisted soft tissue mobilization starts with using a little bit of cream. You just wanna use something to help reduce the friction with the skin because what we want to do is address the fascial structures and we're going to have to use a little bit of pressure and with that pressure we don't want to irritate injure or just try to straight exfoliate uh, Sonia's calf here right we want to actually get some good therapeutic effect before irritating the skin now you'll see I'll, I'll go ahead and rub in this this kind of lotiony smart tools cream here and while I'm doing that I might actually pay attention and see if I feel any changes in tissue texture if I feel any changes in tissue tension like the fascial tension just keep in mental notes for when I actually go through and do this technique now you'll notice that I have my thigh against Sonia's foot this is so I can control dorsiflexion and the amount of tension in our posterior coral fascia now the first thing you're going to do is we want to scan, we want to assess the tissues and what you're going to use is a fairly broad tool for this. Right, so we want a broad tool that's going to help us cover a lot of area. Uh, thinner, smaller tools like this to work a little bit better for scanning than perhaps say something like this, although this is great to do ther therapy with, right, or the, the IASTM with it's not as easy to feel with that tool, so maybe we start here. And I'm just gonna take the tool and go all the way through all of this curl fascia. All right, and what I'm trying to take note of is any tissue abnormalities. And what it feels like with this tool is bumpiness. All right, so I felt some bumpiness in here, I felt some bumpiness in here, and I felt some bumpiness down here. All right, so what's the next step? Now we want to address this stuff. And what we're probably gonna think about most, we could get into a fairly long conversation about how fascia um, adapt, not adapts, but responds to dysfunction. We could start talking about the, the Schlieff model and some other adaptations that may be happening in response to manual therapy with fascia. But I think the one 
the one uh, hypothesized adaptation that makes probably the most sense for our fossil techniques is this idea that part of this dysfunction that happens between fascia is the binding of fascial layers by uh, disorganized connective tissue in response to the inflammatory process and perhaps maybe a, a initially some tissue damage. So we have a little bit of tissue damage that stimulates the inflammatory response. We get hypercapillarization, we get disorganized collagen matrix, and then these fascial layers get bound down. Now, an important thing to consider is that fascia doesn't align itself like this. Your posterior curl fascia is not this way. Although we tend to think about things this way when we look at the back of the leg because of the calf and the Achilles tendon, the crural fascia is actually cross-hatched like this, and that collagen matrix that is getting laid down is in every different direction. So I want to go through some strokes in a lot of different directions that are going to maybe disrupt that, right, and maybe follow it up with a little uh, active uh, instrument assisted soft tissue mobilization to try to get better mobility between those sheaths. So here's what I like to do. Number one, I, I probably won't use the scanner. I'll probably use something with rather than a single bevel, which is pretty sharp, go to something with a double bevel, which means it's shaved from both sides, just to reduce the intensity a little bit. Now what I tend to do is try to go in every direction so this way, this way, this way, this way, this way, and this way. So that's about six different directions I'm going. And the way I do it is actually pretty simple. I usually hold one side and then just kind of do a little quarter turn like that. So that's that direction. Give me a couple this way. I'll go a couple this way. Turn it around. Couple this way. Couple this way. I'll either go some long strokes this way or I can do some scooping short strokes if you guys want to do that. Same thing in the other direction, right? And that's about it. Now maybe I do two to four strokes in every area. So we're talking, what, a maximum of 15 to 30 strokes per area. It doesn't take a lot of intervention using these techniques. Let's go down to this area, same thing. I can go here, 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 here and here, right? And hopefully that's broken up the collagen matrix there. You don't have to use this tool either. So if you don't like that tool, you know, just kind of keep in mind, double bevels are gonna be less intense than single bevel tools. If you have a concave surface, there's gonna be more area against the skin, which is gonna decrease pressure, as opposed to a convex surface, which is more pressure per square inch, right? So we can use this tool if we want. This shark, uh, shark tooth, shark fin, whatever you guys want, uh, tool from Smart Tools is actually like a really versatile tool because it kind of has all the different edges, all right? So I can come through here. You know, if I was doing the whole calf, especially if somebody bigger, you know, maybe I want to use this bigger tool to get a lot more area. I can do all the same stuff, right? Just make sure you keep the edge going in the direction you want. And you guys might also notice that the angle I'm keeping with these edges is about 20 to 60 degrees. The one mistake I see a lot is this right, which is just kind of like scratching at the skin. We want to create shear between layers, which means you're going to have to create an angle this way so that we're kind of like pushing that tissue along as we go. So 20 to 60 degrees is probably a good way to go. Now a couple other things I'll do when I'm back here on the posterior part of the lower leg is frame the Achilles tendon. So Back off on the pressure here, guys. Achilles tendons are very tender, but I'll just go through here. Note where things are a little more bumpy, and again, if I notice bumpiness, maybe I go in a couple different directions. All right. A couple different directions here. All right. And then again, you're just trying to find tools that fit the surface that you're working with so if you wanted to work the Achilles tendon all the way down to the 
periosteum of the calcaneus, you could grab this little hook tool, right, and figure out which one of the circles fits best, and I could try to break things up this way. I think people get way too caught up on strokes you know, what the fanciest stroke they can use, and, and this is the right tool for this. It's, it's actually not that complicated, and with a little bit of experience, I think you guys will quickly find which tools you like best for which areas. I know for me, this tool comes in handy for the lower extremity, right? This tool is obviously very handy for the heel. And then, if I'm trying to minimize what I'm packing, because this has so many surfaces, the shark fin tool, I, I generally carry this by just putting it in my pocket and now I can, I can travel to people's homes or whatever I happen to be doing that day. I don't necessarily have to hold, have the whole set with me. Now the last thing I want to show you guys, which is kind of an important point to add to this, I would probably finish up with a little bit of IASTM's version of pin and stretch. So what you're going to do is you're gonna block out some of the tissue, and then what I'm gonna have Sonia do is go ahead and dorsiflex for me, that is pull her foot up towards her knee, right? So that's, that's our first level of relative intensity, and I can kinda hook up into here, pull up all the, the tissue, and then again, good. Hook up into here, pull up all that tissue, good. If I wanna get a little bit more intense, all right, I can time this with Sonia. She's doing a really good job here for me. But I can hook into the tissue, have her pull up, and then I can keep going. And then if I wanted to take it one more, which you guys saw me do there, I could not only hook it, have her pull up, keep going, pulling through the tissue, I could use some overpressure. All right, so that's getting pretty intense. Maybe not something I would do with somebody the first time. But I think it's definitely an important component of this, once you've gone through the different layers, right, you've tried to break up all of that adhesive tissue, now we're gonna get a little bit more functional. Last trick of the trade, and this is more of addressing muscular dysfunction, I do find a small benefit in carryover when I use instrument assisted soft tissue mobilization to reinforce release of trigger points from the manual therapy I did prior to this. And here's what I mean. So let's say Sonia has a trigger point in her lateral gastroc. I've already done my release techniques, I've already done my joint mobilization, and now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to that trigger point and I'm just gonna kinda go in every direction, ensuring that any inflammatory response, any tissue damage, any acute uh, point of adhesion around that trigger point is broken up. Right? You can almost think of this like cross friction massage, if you guys learned that in PT school, only with the tool. Right? And what I find is, is using that technique I actually get a little better carryover to my next session. Trigger points don't seem to come back as much. And, and you guys have heard me talk about carryover before. It's probably one of the most important and under addressed things in all of rehabilitation. The idea that things last longer or there's last, less of a backward step in between sessions, right? That's just so important for advancing therapy faster and faster. So again guys, you're gonna scan, you're then going to disrupt right, any area that you think is potentially bound down, right? There's an abnormal tissue quality there. We could then go back and do the trigger point thing if we wanted to, right? Any trigger points we found and then we did that more active kind of pin and stretch technique Right? And we can do it passively, we can have them pull up their foot, we can have them pull up their foot and push through the tissue, we can have them pull up their foot, foot pull through the tissue and add over pressure, all as means of trying to improve mobility and function of the connective tissue structure 
being our curl fascia, and we did a little framing of the Achilles tendon. Stay put for your close-up recap. And for our close-up recap, we're just gonna take a little bit of the Smart Tools cream, right, lay it down on the calf. We're gonna go ahead and kinda work that into the tissue. Might have used a little too much there, as I said. I know some people get all bent out of shape about how much you use. Just kinda work it in. If you got too much, you can put it on the other side. This stuff is more or less lotion anyway. Most people are not gonna complain about you accidentally having to moisturize their other calf. All right, so rub it in. I'm kind of feeling through the different tissues here a little bit, seeing if I feel any abnormal tension. She definitely has a little bit of increased tissue density here. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is scan through the tissue. Right, you guys notice I just press down to where I get a little pushback from the muscle. I'm at about a 20 degree angle, and then I just pull through. And that's it, she's got a little bumpiness right here. All right, maybe I come down next layer, she's got a little bumpiness right here. And a little bit right there. All right, so I'm keeping mental note of this stuff. And she's got a little bumpiness up there. And then, yeah, a little bit there. All right, so we see a lot of stuff around the Achilles tendon and then some stuff up here and here. Now, ideally, I would just use the handlebar tool because I can cover a lot of ground very quickly. And I'm gonna start off by going in a lot of different directions, right? So we wanna break up that disorderly collagen that might be binding down the various fascia layers. All right, so that way. And then I can turn it around and go up this way. And up this way, I can use some scooping strokes up this way. Some scooping strokes back down this way. Right. And maybe I would have used a couple more strokes there, but more or less that's, that's a treatment for that area. Let's go down here, same thing, two, three, four, you know, maybe two to five strokes in each direction. Doesn't take a ton. Some scooping this way, some scooping back down. All right, now I'm gonna put this tool down. It'll be a little tough on the Achilles tendon. The Achilles tendon is pretty tender. So maybe I'm gonna go ahead and use this tool. All right, and I can go ahead and frame down my Achilles tendon, which just means going along the borders. All right, All right and then I'm gonna use those strokes in different directions as I find bumpy spots. Come up this way. You might see there on the camera, guys, she's getting a little bit of red. That's pretty normal, normal histamine response. If she had a ton of petechiae, you know, I think that's probably a good sign that you need to back off just a little bit. There's nothing actually beneficial about those petechiae. It's probably more coincidental that were breaking up hypercapillarization where there happened to be an injury. All right, and then maybe the last couple of things I wanna do is I felt a trigger point over here that I had released earlier. So I'm gonna go back over this trigger point, disrupt any scar tissue or additional adhesive tissue that's developed around that trigger point. Like I said, I have found a little bit of a benefit to, for improved carryover. And maybe the last thing I want to do is go over the heel. Remember that this is, I'm using these, this hook tool and I'm using the smaller circle for Sonia's tiny little heels here. And just kind of going through in different directions. I'm sorry, I almost actually forgot. The last thing I want to do is try to get a little bit of mobility back. Since my goal here was to increase her dorsiflexion, let's do a little bit of these pin and stretch techniques. So I can pin down some tissue, kind of pull in, and then have her pull her foot up, right? That would be active, right? So boom, pull up, right? I can make this a little bit more intense by pinning down, and then as she pulls up, I go up too, 
right? Especially as I get down into this area, we knew there was some stuff before, right? So pin down, pull up. Good stuff. Pin down, pull up. And then what I can do is I can actually use my knee to push her into dorsiflexion and add some overpressure as I go through. One more time. So there you guys have it, instrument assisted soft tissue mobilization for the posterior crural fascia and Achilles tendon. So there you have it, instrument assisted soft tissue mobilization. Make sure to assess, address using the intervention, and then of course reassess. And if you get the chance, these videos are not a replacement for live education. Of course, if you get the chance, you should take live workshops or find a mentor who's experienced using these tools or maybe a friend that wants to learn them too so at least you can practice on each other and give each other some tactile feedback of what you feel, how you felt the next day, what results you felt that you got. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please feel free to leave your questions below.